The next thing I saw was me in a casket. To see yourself in that position is like watching your own funeral. Deep inside the eye of the Bridge Creek Moor tornado, winds roared at a staggering 302 miles per hour fast enough to circle the globe in under two minutes. In 1999, when the F5 tornado tore through Bridge Creek, traditional shelters failed, and mobile homes offered no refuge as it ripped asphalt from the ground, debarked trees, and vaporized entire neighborhoods in seconds. But what twisted physics and raw power converged to create that perfect storm? Join us now as we follow the tornado's birth near Amber, Oklahoma, and track its devastating march toward Moore. Tornadoes are scary, but what happened in Oklahoma on May 3, 1999, was on a whole other level. This wasn't just a storm, it was a monster, a record breaker, and a life changer. Today, we'll uncover how mobile Doppler radar captured 300 2-mile-per-hour gusts why this twister prompted the first-ever tornado emergency, and how its aftermath still shapes our safety protocols. In the days before May 3, 1999, a warm, humid air mass from the Gulf of Mexico met an advancing cold front from the Rockies. A strong upper-level low-pressure system moved into the central and southern plains. As the morning clouds burned off, the sun heated the ground, making the air even more unstable. The atmosphere was loaded with moisture, and wind shear was off the charts. Basically, all the perfect ingredients for supercell thunderstorms were coming together. But nothing prepared the storm chasers for when the tornado touches down. And we had to get get going. I did not want to be that close because I wasn't c completely familiar with those roads and I did not want to get in a dead end. At 6.23 p.m., the funnel dropped near Chikasha, quickly intensifying to F2 strength as it carved a path eastward. At first, the tornado didn't look that different from others. But within minutes, it grew into a massive wedge, sometimes reaching a mile wide. As it crossed Oklahoma State Highway 92, it quickly hit F4 strength. By the time it reached the Willow Lake Edition in Bridge Creek, it was an F5, the highest rating possible. Here's where things get wild. A mobile Doppler radar truck, known as Doppler on Wheels, was tracking the storm and stationed near Bridge Creek, clocked winds of 302 miles per hour at 105 feet above ground. No surface instrument survived to confirm, but high-resolution video shows debris accelerating faster than a Formula One race car. You won't believe the moment the tornado crossed the interstate and the devastation it caused. The tornado tore through Bridge Creek, Newcastle, Moore, and southern Oklahoma City. In Bridge Creek, the damage was almost unimaginable. Houses, some bolted to their concrete foundations, were ripped away, leaving only bare slabs, and entire neighborhoods vanished. Vehicles were tossed hundreds of yards. The tornado's path was 38 miles long and up to a mile wide in places. It lasted for 85 minutes. Over 1,000 homes were destroyed. 36 people died on site, with five more dying from related causes, and 583 were injured. More bore the brunt next. Schools, hospitals, churches. Nothing was safe in the EF-5 Corps. The tornado remains the costliest in Oklahoma history and one of the most expensive in U.S. history. It changed how people think about tornado safety, especially when it comes to mobile homes and overpasses. But the human story of survival under the overpass reveals a critical warning lesson. Some people, thinking it was safe, took shelter under the bridge. Stuart and Keith run for cover under this overpass. But as they are about to find out, it is no match for the incredible power of an F5 tornado. But the tornado's winds turned the overpass into a deadly trap. Flying debris caused horrific injuries, broken bones, lost fingers and ears, and even impalements from wood and metal. Eyewitnesses described the sound as like a thousand freight trains, and the sight as the gates of hell opening. It was just like somebody opened the gates of hell. 
I turned like this, and the guy that I was hanging on to, the truck driver, was gone. Survivors talk about the terror of watching their homes disappear and the heartbreak of losing loved ones. Only one woman died under the bridge, but nearly everyone else was badly hurt. This event debunked the overpass shelter myth. I said, please God, don't let me die. And then in my head I was thinking, you know, I said goodbye to myself, or goodbye to everybody I knew because I knew I was going to die. According to a study by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, seeking shelter in an overpass is to become a stationary target for flying debris. The wind channeling effect that occurs within these structures, along with an increase in wind speeds above ground level, changing of wind direction when the tornado vortex passes. Amazingly, there were miracles too. In Grady County, a deputy found a 10-month-old baby girl face down in the mud, 100 feet from her destroyed home. She had been ripped from her mother's arms, but survived with only minor injuries. Next, we explore how this event forever changed tornado warnings. Before 1999, tornado warnings were routine tornado warnings. But meteorologists realized that an F5 headed for a populated suburb required something stronger, an urgent call to action. The challenge, how to convey this is not a drill to a terrified public in under 60 seconds. This led to the birth of the tornado emergency. That evening, NWS Norman issued the first-ever tornado emergency for more, a step above warning, signaling catastrophic damage and probable loss of life. Live TV interrupted primetime programming. Sirens wailed. Researchers later confirmed this alert saved lives by driving home the sheer devastation to come. Advances in Mobile Radar Science The Doppler on Wheels teams, Worman et al., captured unprecedented data. Their 2007 paper reported 300 2-miles-per-hour winds. A 2021 reanalysis raised that to 321 miles per hour using refined algorithms. These measurements, taken 32 meters above ground, prompted new computational models for tornado dynamics. Today's forecasting owes much to that fateful night's data. At 7.48 p.m., after an 85-minute rampage covering 38 miles, the tornado lifted just south of Midwest City. The Bridge Creek Moor tornado remains the benchmark for tornado intensity, 302 miles per hour recorded by Dow in 1999, and revised to 321 miles per hour in 2021. 36 direct fatalities, 5 indirect, 583 injured, over $1 billion in damages. First use of a tornado emergency, new public safety protocols, and revolutionary radar science. Do let us know in the comments if you lived in more that night. Would you have heated the tornado emergency? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.